another running back, Tony Pollard, heading over to Tennessee, $0.75 million contract on both DL left and keep trade cut today, RB19. Last year, he finally gets all the volume we wanted, 18.8 opportunities per game. He gives us 11.5 half PPR points per game. Coming off that ankle injury, I think probably hurt him more than any of us were really projecting it to. The year before, though, we know how dominant he was on less opportunities. They're kind of being like the the lightning to Ezekiel Elliott's thunder. But now he heads to Tennessee where he's kind of a redundant running back to Tajay Spears. They do, I would say, a similar thing when they're at their best, which makes it a little bit of an odd signing. But this is also enough money that makes me think that this is going to be Pollard's backfield first, then Tajay Spears. Maybe Tennessee just wants to keep Tajay Spears doing what he did last year, and they think that's where he's at his best. Honestly, I wouldn't argue with that. Tajay Spears is a smaller running back with actual no ACLs in his knees. So maybe it's best to keep him on that lighter touch count. Skyler, how are we feeling about Tony Pollard moving over to the Titans? Well, for those guys being somewhat similar in your eyes, I think they may just end up going with the hot hand. I don't think the money is like crazy enough where it's locking Pollard into he's going to be the 1A or the 1B. We're really going to have to see how that shakes out. That being said, the price for him being around like running back 24, you said running back 19 there. I doubt that that goes up. I'm totally fine with that. You're talking about a guy you can use, you know, mid late second round pick on and get a guy in the room who could end up making a difference. I'm totally cool with power. And I think my worries lie more with whether or not he can play quick and aggressive. If he has the burst back that we were missing last year, more so than who he's playing with in his backfield, it was always going to be what version of Tony power are we getting? Because last year he just didn't have it. It was really odd seeing him get out in space and not putting the burners on and leaving people behind. He was only behind Christian McCaffrey in red zone rushes last year, but he only converted 8% of his red zone touches into touchdowns, which was 26th amongst players with greater than 30 opportunities. So not very good. And that was the difference between what we would consider a solid season and one to forget. So I think with Tony Pollard, it's just going to come down to, do we get that burst and and does yep. he score touchdowns, right? <laughs> Which is two important things, I would say, for your running back. Um, but the price here is totally fine. It's not like yeah. you're going out and spending tight end ten, or running back 10 prices like you were last offseason for some managers. So I, 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 I'm no problem with Tony Pollard here. I think the upside is, mm-hmm. is well worth where you're getting him. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I like the price of entry for Tony Pollard at this point. Chuck, how are you feeling about Tony Pollard? And also, like, Thoughts on Tajay Spears? I feel pretty good about this. I like the idea of him maybe taking a little bit of a lesser role. You know, not everybody's built for the big time. You know, you got to put that Dallas Cowboys star in your chest and you're starting running back and they just got rid of one of the top three, probably best in the history of the franchise. Like some guys just, you know, so that's, that's the Cowboys version of having Vita Vea line across, line up across (laughs) him. You put him with a little mix, you know, bring him in with some Spears Tennessee, I like teams who are delusional. Tennessee thinks that they're going to be really good. They're going to try to do everything they can to compete this year. I like to see them bolster the offensive line in the draft. Like they're doing some things. Obviously, they bring in Calvin Ridley. Um, but like my favorite little nugget that I found in doing a little Tony Pollard research is that from week 11 on, for whatever the reason might be, is it coming back from injury? Who knows? He was PFF's number one graded rusher. So does that indicate to us that this is a guy that was coming out of something more gruesome than maybe we were ready to give him time for? Uh, maybe the fantasy success didn't translate to it, but you put that much distance between him and what he's going to be doing in Tennessee and me with maybe less carries. You know, it's still a guy who doesn't have a ton of mileage, you know, less than 800 carries in his career total. Um, I like what he still could be, like Skyler said, for the price that he still is going for. Yeah, and I think you can find that report where Tony Pollard even said week 11 is when he started to feel good. Maybe mm. he saw PFF's grades and he came up and he, you know, went from there. But mm. I know I think there is something to it because the, the tightrope surgery on the ankle, it seems like a pretty serious thing, right? We That same mm. thing for Cooper Cup. Uh, I, I think there's something to there. Uh, Coop, what do you think? Yeah, the tightrope surgery, uh, capital T, capital, capital R, by the way, it is a trademarked surgery that only certain people are allowed to do. Yeah. So I've been, I've been digging in a little bit into a little tightrope action. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> gross. Uh, I will say it, it's, let's get that search history going right. And if we can, 
Yeah, don't Google tightrope surgery or Tommy John surgery because they are very invasive procedures, right? It's a way to get back from the high ankle. So the high ankle sprain historically has been like a huge problem uh, for players and, and recovery has been, been brutal. And sometimes it ruins your career, like turf toe does. Like uh, an example of a guy who's, whose career was pretty much ruined by high ankle sprains was Darren McFadden, right? Uh, so mm-hmm. what the tightrope surgery is, is they like literally, they call it tightrope because they literally put this like cord in your leg and like tighten it up. It's, it's, it's insanity, right? But it's, it's a faster way to recover from this injury. But because it's so new, we don't have like a long amount of data on whether it, it like the recovery is supposed to be, it's supposed to be a shorter recovery, but mm-hmm. we've seen guys, like you said, Cooper Cup struggle with it. Tony Pollard, Pollard struggled with it. And mm-hmm. Darnell Mooney had the same exact surgery and the same exact injury he just got paid 40 million dollars so maybe people are looking at this injury and saying you know what we're going to classify it like acl where it's like if you come back and you have limited production but you come back healthy now we're going to treat the next season up as like the bounce back season right i mean it seems like the money is saying that right so Mm -hmm. that's the way i kind of look at it and say like you know what brutal like liz frank surgery ACL tightrope surgery. We should probably put them together at this stage, in my opinion. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. not a doctor, but I play one on YouTube, and mm-hmm. like, and say like, okay, maybe when people have this injury, we got to give them some leeway, right, or fade them, right. And I'll tell, I'll end it by saying this: yeah. uh, there's a high end prospect coming out that's very important to me uh, that had this same surgery last year. His name is Brock Bowers. Mm. Very, very interesting there. Can, can we touch on that for a second? Do you have actual worry Bowers rookie year or anything because of that? I mean, for, for Bowers, rookie year is going to depend on landing spot for first and foremost. If we think he's going to be a top two target on the team, then in redraft, we're going to take him. If he lands somewhere where that's not apparent right away, then then it could get dicey. But for me, when I do my dynasty stuff, I just kind of like – I kind of group guys into, especially if I'm going to do stuff now. I know you guys get a little Devi stuff. It's like I look at it and I say, who is guaranteed to get drafted early and who is generational talent? I want those guys first. So I got three quarterbacks, two wide receivers, and then Brock Bowers. If people want to put Roma Dunze ahead of him, go right ahead. I don't care. You know, If you want to put J.J. McCarthy ahead of him, go ahead. I don't care. But like, I just have a hard time ranking him outside the top eight. And right now for me, it, it's like six. And, and landing spot's not going to change that. And tightrope surgery is not going to change that. Him looking weird in pictures next to Gronk is not going to change that. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, I'm right. Looking it's like, like he worked in IT while he was there. Dude, he, he he was packing. He, nobody nobody He's talked looking about like, how much he was packing in that photo. Yeah, packing hard, dude. He had the classic <laughs> nerds dance with like secret secret packing. Like no question, he would like crush you in Super Smash Brothers Melee. Like he's like that. He seems like that I mean, kind we, of, hey, we could we could set that up. I'm down. That was a football guy. You look at that picture and you go, that's a football guy right there. That, this real guy, oh yeah, like it, dude. I I bet he's awesome at fantasy football too. Like he just seems like <laughs> that kind of cerebral type of dude. But I have, mm-hmm. I I'm not gonna again. If he's out there running around, it's gonna be hard to judge him. And again, and I would I I'm probably gonna hit up Edwin Porras after this and be like, hey dude, talk to me mm-hmm. about this. Uh, t tightrope TM surgery here because yeah. you know I'm just I'm just doing my Google research you know like YouTube YouTube Google yeah. research though but that's what I found but he'll you know? he'll also have like the benefit of you know the on ramp the rookie tight ends have already you know compared to most other positions so I mean if this is if there was a year for an injury to affect him his rookie year you can kind of kind of throw it out to a wash anyways so that's just how yeah. I would view it. I mean, like, let's real quick, like, what are the landing spots where he wouldn't be a top? Two? Like, assuming he's healthy, what landing spots would he not be a top two target right away? Dolphins? He would not be. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. How many others? Let's go to the tape. Yeah, I'm about to say that. Again. I'm like angles. <laughs> like, this is like, actually tough. Now I have to I have to look because in most cases, in most B- cases. Bank. All right, well, let me let me ask let me ask you this. He goes to Tennessee. With Hopkins, Tennessee at seven. With Hopkins and Ridley, spent a lot of money on on Ridley. Chig Chig mm-hmm. Conquo buried under the floorboards. We'll <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, sir. laughs> never get him, but he, but he no, I think I think you're right. I think for year one, he's a fade in redraft. Hundred percent, I would mm-hmm. fade him if he goes to the Titans. Now that's a great one, Chuck. 
hundred mm. percent of fade in, in redraft. You know, now all of a sudden today, the number one landing spot with a bullet becomes the Chargers. If they were to take LSU. Brock Bowers at five yeah. after cutting Mike Williams, boy, yeah. I would do. Yeah. I would need a new pair of trousers. Last. Let's, let's get him on the Falcons. Pick eight. <laughs> How about that one? We'll get him on the Falcons. Pick eight. You know, he can go, he can go block for Kyle Pitts. If Mute they, him. Mods, mods, remove him. From the... All right, all right, all right. Tyler, how you. dare you? You can go pick nine to Chicago. You can go pick. I'm not coming to visit Chicago. you in Vegas anymore, Skyler. Roll, roll, roll the sponsor. Roll the sponsor. Chicago, <laughs> Chicago is the funniest one because he would just like triple overlap vaporize. Mm-hmm. Gerald Everett and Cole Komet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Coop would be doing the Bruce all over. Just all the clothes. Uh, anytime, <laughs> you get it, anytime you can use your top 10 pick on a third tight end. Anytime, yeah. The funniest yeah. landing spots, right? Like uh, somebody said the Steelers. Uh, like Arthur Smith was talking to him at the PGA event this week. Which yeah, is pick um, 20. Love it, yeah. dude. Yeah. 20, yeah. He mm-hmm. slides to 20. That'd be terrible, dude. 